This is Algebra 1, Term 5, Lesson 4, Thinking Tasks. We'll begin with a three-act task, Falling Glow Sticks, which is basically an excerpt from a movie, and students will do some math related to that excerpt. And then we'll move on to a Desmos activity where students will learn strategies in their calculator to simplify square root expressions. And then we'll finish up with number talks, simplifying square roots. So let's start with movie math. You ready, Sean? Yeah, go ahead. Three, two, one, two, almost three. You have just seen the first of two videos. Uh, you will then show the second video where he calculates in his head what he believes is the depth of that chasm and so your students are going to determine if he's right so the students are going to basically see if they can confirm his answer or refute his answer with some actual math they will use the vertical motion formula that has the negative 16 in it so they may have to you may have to help them find that or they may have to refer back to their earlier activities but they've used it a good bit so hopefully some of them already remember it and then when they use that they can calculate how far it should have fallen and how far was that compared to what he said and then what we want to do is take what he said in the video for the actual distance and then solve a quadratic equation to see what it would have been how many seconds it would have taken to make the distance he suggested did they make a mistake maybe they just round it up or down a little what do you think our next activity is a Desmos classroom activity where students will explore strategies for simplifying square root expressions using the graphing calculator and there are a lot of strategies in here believe it or not there's nine screens but I would say most of your time will probably be spent here take your time uh, initially they're going to resist trying to figure out what these people are thinking but that is the whole purpose of this task is for them to get into the minds of the people that are showing them their work to try to figure out why they did what they did and all of these strategies are valid and students are encouraged to use these strategies when they are simplifying square root expressions so let's start with Janaya so you'll notice Janaya used a graphing calculator to divide 175 by 4 then divided by 9, then divided by 16, and then divided by 25. So she divided four different times. So what is she trying to accomplish? It does show that she typed square root of 25 times 7 as her next step. What was she thinking? And then the students will simplify the remainder of the way down to a simplest radical form, and they will type it in the blank. And when they do, they will get a smiley face if they've gotten it correct. So it is self-checking in that respect. Uh, I would pace your kids to keep them with you because these strategies are all very important strategies that students can use. Like in this one, if they don't know their multiplication tables very well, and a lot of kids don't, and I was one of those kids, uh, this is one way of figuring out what goes evenly into a number uh, just by trying your perfect squares. Hopefully they know most of their perfect squares by heart at this point, but they may need that list from the previous assignment if they do not. Okay, here's another one. Kelsey has the square root of 96, and then she typed in these two expressions in her calculator. She sees that 20, 96 divided by 4 is 24, and then she took the 24 and divided by 4. And then she wrote square root of 16 times 6. What is she thinking? So again, let the kids talk about it, spend time thinking about it, guide them with questioning. Do not just tell them what she was thinking. Let's see if they can figure out why she wrote a 16 underneath that radical. And then finally, they will type the answer in the blank simplified. Simplified simply means simplest radical form. So when it says finish simplifying, that's what it means. All right, here's Jacob. He had the square root of 216. So he started by typing 216 divided by 4. He might know the divisibility rules for 4. Then he divided by 9. And then he divided by 36. So you may wonder, well, why did he skip 16? Why did he skip 
25. He went all the way to 36. What's he thinking? And then he wrote square root of 36 times 6. Finish simplifying and type it below. All right, here's Pedro. He's using what are called calculator confirmations. Something you should notice is that every one of these decimal approximations are the same. All right, here's Herman. Now, Herman had a really big number, 88,200. He divided out a 100, and then he divided the result by 9, and then he divided the right result by 2, and then he wrote out 9 times 100 times 49, and he wrote down here, or he, I guess he wrote, it says he wrote, square root of 44,100 times 2, and then he wrote 3 times 10 times 7 times the square root of 2. Where is he getting this? This one is going to take some time. Uh, some of the kids will see right away what he's thinking. Some will go, I don't know what Herman's thinking. He's got so much going on here. Give them plenty of time on this screen. Encourage dialogue. Invite student thinking. And share it. If students come up with something cool, say this is a great idea here that you have. Can I show it? And show the class, talk about it. And then they'll finish simplifying this expression and type it below. Now at this point they can start using combinations of strategies that they've seen on previous screens if they need to do additional work or if they want to compare the. Alright now this one is giving them an expression square root of 9900 and there are five steps here so obviously square root of 9900 will be our first step and they're going to break this down and simplify the expression and they should put those in order. This one is not self-checking, so you might want to put up your dashboard and anonymize it if you want them to know if they got this correct. All right, now Michaela has the longest, the most amount of work. She's a very detailed child. Uh, she divided by four, this huge number. This is the biggest one so far. And then she typed this. Notice there's nothing over here except the original problem. All of her work has been done in the calculator. And then she divided that result that she got last time by 9. And then she write this or type that. Then she take, took that result divided by 49. And then she wrote this. And then she took that result divided by 121. And then she wrote this. And then she didn't write anything after that. So the students need to complete the process uh, by figuring out what she's doing, describe her strategy, and then finish simplifying the expression and type in the blank. It will give them a smiley face when they get it. I would say your most, your longest one to figure out will maybe this one. Uh, they're kind of using a combination of strategies, um, sort of like Herman and maybe a little bit of Pedro in here too. It looks like she's doing two different things with her calculator strategy. All right, now for these, you're going to have two stacks, and it says right here, try to put these cards in order that makes sense for both piles. So there's really just two problems here, but all the steps are kind of mixed together. So their goal is to figure out which two are being simplified and then put the steps below them in order as best they can. Uh, the dashboard is going to give them the check if they just get them in the right stack. If you want them to truly be in order, then you're going to have to manually come in and look at their screens to see if they got them in order when they put them in their piles. And then here's one. They're going to try at least two of the strategies that they've seen today, or they can come up with other strategies. Kids are clever. They can come up with different ways to figure out what three times the square root of 405 is. They will need to explain their thinking or show their work here. Remember, they can type their work in using the math tool which is here or they can upload a picture of their work so let's say they want to do it on a whiteboard or do it on the whiteboard in front of the class they could take a picture with their device and insert that picture into this box and then submit below they will type their simplified answer and again it will give them a smiley face if it is correct and that concludes our Desmos activity so next we'll go back to our slides the last thing they're going to do is a number talk, and um, I'm going to give you an additional exercise, additional problem in the teacher show notes for the teacher slides. 
So when you get your teacher slides, my recommendation is that you go through one of these as a whole class and invite students up to do one problem in a variety of ways. So what I would do is I would throw the square root up on the board and then I would say, is there a volunteer? Is there a team that wants to volunteer to come up here and simplify this expression using one or more of the strategies we've already seen today? Or maybe you have some other ideas you want to use. That's fine. Have them come up and show their strategies and then invite another team to come up and show something else, a different way of breaking it down. And then another team. If you can get two or three at least, that would be great. But the whole point of a number talk is for students to see that there are many, many different ways to write uh, out this process. There's not just one strategy and they don't have to go in a certain order or do things in the same way. So we want to encourage divergent thinking, creativity, and uh, if you'll get them to do it as a whole class, I think you'll get a better result for the remainder of this particular task. So once you've done one problem together as a whole class, the students are going to work these three as a team. And then they're going to choose one of the three, any one they want, and they're going to make a video with their team showing their work and explaining their thinking. Uh, this can get kind of noisy. What I usually do with these video type problems is they go to the boards and they're writing up there what they're doing and they're talking. Sometimes they're all talking at the same time and their videos are kind of loud and noisy, but that's okay. I just have them do that uh, as a way of documenting their work, explaining their thinking. Uh, and for my experience, it's easier to get them to produce videos in teams than it is individually because a lot of these kids are super shy and they're afraid to do it by themselves. But they get a lot more courageous when they've got teammates next to them that are talking, they're willing to interject their own ideas. So have them create their video. They will insert on the next screen, I've got a blank one here, where they embed their team video. And then on the two that are left that they didn't put in their video, they will just insert work on this screen uh, showing how they got through this task. So each person will embed their video um, that gets to be tricky. Sometimes you can't get it to work because of permissions. So if you want on this video, on this screen, one team member can embed the video and the others can just say, my video is on so-and-so's slide. So if you're having issues with permissions, I know we definitely had that when we were doing team videos. So on this slide though, each student can put out the work themselves. They can uh, type it out or take a picture of it if it's on the board and put it into this slide. And that concludes our thinking tasks lesson. We only have one more lesson before our first term five test. Y'all have a great day.